today, we're gonna find out whether or not that boat is actually worth $400,000. You heard me correctly. That's like the price of a decent house. Boy, we made it. Today, we're gonna find out whether or not that boat is actually worth $400,000. So, here's what we're gonna do. I've got Mr. Ethan Roberts. And I've got Mr. Colton Brockbank. So you guys already know that I'm a quaddy van. I've had them for years, I love them. But I have a couple of unbiased, hard to impress dudes right here. My name's Colton Brockbank. I'm in the marketing division of things. <laughs> um, was an athlete for a good long time and travel for wakeboarding and surfing and coaching on all that side of things and now I do coaching and marketing and stuff like that. My name is Ethan Roberts. My career is a bit loose but I'm an athlete, producer, and kind of like a master of a jack of all trades but master at none. But yeah, I don't know. My career my career is kind of strange to say the least. Wakeboarder of the century here, like this man has ridden behind just about everything for years, and Ethan has ridden everything you can imagine. X Games, timber sleds, dirt bikes, they're hard critics. First question I gotta ask, is that boat worth $400,000, first glance? Looking at it, it, it's an amazing looking boat, but like 400,000, you can buy a lot for 400 grand. That's two of my first houses. Once you get up closer to it, the details of it, that's what like really gets you. Yeah. From first glance, you're like, oh, it's cool. Knowing that it's made out of aluminum's cool, but then you feel like, the diamond plating and the lights everywhere and like this leather is nicer than most Lamborghinis and like <laughs> it's it, like it's pretty dope. Yeah dude the seating on this thing is unreal. That's what's really cool. All the stitching that's on the inside of it that's that's where a lot of the, the price comes is, from there. You guys have seen Pavati uh, wakeboard boats all over the internet probably for years. And the pricing is what was like 200 grand, then 250, then 300. And this year they're at $400,000 due to supply and demand. Um, and this is their flagship model. This is like their big bad boy. This is the 26 footer. This is like the most expensive boat they make. You know, you gotta ask yourself that question when you see a, a picture of a boat on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and it says it has a price tag attached to it of three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. I've seen so many comments from people like, no way, no, never, not in a million years would I ever pay that kind of money. But guess what? Bavadi's selling more boats than ever. At one point, the waiting list was like two or three years long. It probably still is. They've only built a hundred of these boats ever. So it's a true unicorn. I personally know a lot of the features on this thing that, that make it worth more than other boats. And we're going to have, you know, Ethan and Colton give it a real shakedown. We're going to test the surf wave, the wakeboard wave. Hell, we might even throw a tube behind it. We're going to show you what this boat's capable of. If there's Dude, ever been a professional tube rider, flips. that's him right there. I think D-boards are outlawed. Small crew here. Got my beautiful wife, Ashley, here. Here and show you kind of the good, the bad, the ugly. I'll tell you one thing right now that I hate. I'll still critique the hell out of this stuff. This trailer. <laughs> Luckily, they don't make the trailers, um, and I think they've since found a better trailer partner since this one. We're probably going to knock off at least 100 points for this. Are the Rockstar wheels? Like, you put Rockstar wheels on anything, and you're losing 100 points. <laughs> I thought they were off-road wheels. I thought they were, they were made for it. So, six. This is a triaxle uh, trailer, six wheels times 100, so 600 points right off the bat gone. Oh, the other seven, so 700 points with the spare. It'll make up for that though in this paint job. Most Pavatis that you'll see. Um, in fact, almost every Pavati. I think there's very few that have this feature. This is all paint. This is like a metallic forest green paint. Most Pavatis have a wrap on them. So if you've ever seen a Pavati in pictures around the lake, it most likely had this crazy gnarly neon wrap with all kinds of stuff going on. I've had them and they look cool. I think the paint's cooler. This is classier. It's a timeless look. Um, this isn't something that you would have to swap out every year because it got old or worn out or whatever. You guys like it, right? Dude, so dope. That's like the coolest color boat I think I've ever seen. Never seen the boat. As far as power goes, the Pavati has a 575 horsepower Raptor engine. It's the 6.2 liter Inmar. Um, it's a nice engine. Uh, it's still not enough power, in my opinion, which is why we partnered with Pavati to put a diesel in one of these, which is what we've been working on for the last couple of years. Um, it's decent though. It does pretty much everything that most people need it to do. But when you load this boat full of people, full of gear and full of ballast, um, it uses every ounce of power that it has. We're gonna get it unloaded, put it in the water, and let these guys just tear it apart.
right, so boat is on the water. Let's start from the very beginning. The key. The key is that. It's this uh, wireless key fob. And basically, if you hold down the first button, it turns the battery switch on, which I like because if you know anything about boats, you know that you always want to turn the batteries off because they're always draining. So it's got this uh, automatic battery control system. So I literally just hold, hear the beep. So now it's going to turn the battery switches on, which in turn is going to give my power to my giant Garmin screen. I think this is the either 17 inch or 19 inch, I can't remember, but I know that this is their smaller screen because they now offer one that's like two inches bigger. This is all programmable. This is a one touch, like one stop shop control system right here. This screen has all your switches, it has all your gauges, it has a map, it has stereo control, and it's all fully customizable. If you wanna change anything, you can rename all the switches in there, you can add your own um, programs, you can literally set it up so you hit one button and the lights turn on and the ballast fill up, like it has party mode where you can hit a button and all these different things start happening. That is a Garmin Marine product. So it's super, super durable. It's designed for crazy environments. So it has a push button start right there just in case. I'll try this one. I think this does it. Let's see. Yeah. So number two, push button start right there. What do you think? You like that? That's pretty dope. Are those points? Bonus points? That's, that's pretty damn cool. Okay, good. <laughs> Garmin makes airplane parts. Garmin makes parts for everything. So their stuff is very like reliable. It's not like a wakeboard boat screen that's constantly like in and out, like breaking, not breaking. Cause most manufacturers are trying to make their own displays. It ties in with the perfect pass, the zero off speed control. It ties in with um, the stereo system, has your own little control system right here. So if you don't want to touch the screen, this is all touch screen, but if you don't want to, you can scroll through right there. It's got a lot of systems. And while they do integrate pretty well together, they don't all integrate perfectly like since zero off is not a Garmin product those don't talk to each other um, then it also has zip wake which is basically like a stabilization system which we'll get into in a minute and then what we're about to use is one of my favorite parts the bow thrusters so I hit that button right there and you've got literally the ability to push the boat side to side on the front and the rear so we'll go pull over the dock and I'll show you how we use it so obviously Normal docking uh, in a wakeboard boat, you pull up and you kind of just find this combination of forward and reverse and steering the wheel to help to get the ass end to swing over. With this, you just take the bow thrusters, which are a little loud. That's one complaint I do have about them. The front one's a little bit loud. Rear one, not very loud at all. I think it's just mid. If Batman had a boat, this would be it. The Batman boat. But see that? That's like the perfect docking job thanks to the thrusters. So you can, you can hear right here, front thruster, a little bit louder because that one actually goes right through the hull of the boat and it's right below you. So there's no way to really dampen the sound. Um, I think that one also had a couple chips and knocks out of the impeller blade. So it's a little louder than normal anyways. The rear thruster, here it goes. Hear that? It's pretty quiet. I'll go full thrust away from the dock. Watch the dock. Like we're moving pretty good there. Um, so let's go over a couple features real quick while we're in here. Some of the stuff that I know of, like I said, Pavati's are very feature rich and most of the stuff comes standard. Like I said, the options that they offer are things that you would never see on any other boat. You've got heated seats. So not just a heater system, because these, these heater tubes right here, you can see that they pull out. Those are really nice on cold nights for wives and girlfriends, kids, anybody who gets cold. Um, so that's one heating source. And then like I said, all the seats have heaters in them. So you can hit one button and literally all the seats start to warm up, which is really nice. Storage is pretty good. It, it, since the whole boat is, is aluminum inside and out, it's all built as kind of one piece. You start picking up seats right here and pretty much everything is storage. Another thing that I love about it is Pavati makes the captain feel like a real captain. Um, it's got the flip up bolster for, you know, towing and driving and stuff like that. Like the captain station on this thing is very, very well thought out. Like if you drive one of these boats, you're comfortable. You're like, I'm the captain now. This right here is your cooler compartment. So it's got room for a big Yeti. That's a big compartment. Um, tons of room in there. And then you've got, I believe behind here is your fuel tank. Um, and then off to the sides are your hard tank ballast. How important are hard tank ballasts? So anything that's subfloor tank period makes it really nice. So the thing that is different Underneath the seats, the storage doesn't go all the way down because you have the hard tank ballast underneath that. Yep. But the trade-off is in the compartments back here, you don't have those just the big like fat sacks right. essentially, right? Yep. So it's all hard tank, so you're not going to puncture anything. Exactly. That's the thing that I've noticed that is way different about the new boats is you have like different ballast, but it's all like bags. It's right. not the hard tank stuff. The hard tank stuff's... Hard tanks are built into the hole. So these giant aluminum, just like fuel tanks, I'm pretty sure they're 2,000 pounds each. 
I got to double check those numbers. I'll, I'll correct that if it's wrong. Um, but this thing will bring on like 4,000 pounds of ballast from the factory. And then it's got a front tank as well. Um, and then this one also has some additional bags that were added. It's got fat sack in the front. And I'm pretty sure it has fast sacks in the rear. So this boat was designed to be way, way, way down. Um, and you'll feel it once we weigh down, it gets heavy. I like a big girl. Like Ethan would say, you could bring all your friends back here and have a six pack of soda while you're sitting out with your butts. But this is sick. I like this. You can tell we're full because normally the swim step is right out of the water. Now I'm a good 12 inches, eight to 12 inches in the water. So she's full. She's got a lot of weight on. Um, but it's also one of those things where it's great, but I don't love how the water comes up over the rear seat here because this rear seat hatches open and you can get water in the engine compartment if you don't seal that right. And I know that's been a problem that they've had and they fixed it with the newer boats. Um, but for a while there, there was an issue where people weren't paying attention and water would come up over the rear seats and kind of get into the engine compartment. They do have additional ballast bags in this boat that are plumbed in. So it's got a big bag up there, probably a 300 pounder or 300 gallons. Yeah, you can add, but they don't come from the factory like that, but you can add them. They, they come ready for it. Look at her roll here, Brett. Okay, we're going to give her a whirl. Yeah, it doesn't quite give that, give that little side. <laughs> Well, it's trying to stabilize itself, so we'll turn this guy off right here. Oh, that's where you're yeah. turning it off. So that will turn it off. Yeah, it doesn't like to stay off for very long. For a 26 foot boat, that goes. She goes. I think we figured it out. Let's go one more. Hey, uh, hold on there. Oh. <laughs> Sorry! Sorry! That's a dude, short that's term so for a awesome. big boat. That's pretty know. decent, dude. I don't know if we're going to get any wakeboarding in. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we've done that, I can just see everybody else is like, we're I following those it. guys. <laughs> so pretty good pickup for a heavy boat. 26 feet um, and the 575 horsepower engine. I mean, it's using everything it's got. I don't think the prop is the right prop for this elevation. Um, I think this is this is propped for like Havasu, which is a little bit lower than here. So it could use a little bit of prop work to be faster up here. But these boats will consistently do 40 miles an hour on smooth water, rough water, doesn't matter. So we got the ballast tanks empty and the boat's in full cruise mode now. So I'm gonna hand it over to Colton and let him cruise through this really choppy lake. Luckily, I mean, this isn't like storm water by any means. You don't got three foot rollers, but it's choppy. And uh, this is, you know, if you were full speed ahead in most boats in this water right now, it would be pretty bumpy, so. <laughs> That's true hey, all the way up. That Did just cut down? all the way up. I know, that's why I wanted to see the roughest yeah. it would be. That's amazing. I was so scared going into it because yeah, yeah, any yeah. other normal boat you would like boom, feel boom. like it's gonna explode. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this is your Lake Pal boat. Oh my hell. I cringe every time you go into a triple up. Like even a double up, you're like, okay, here comes the bumps and you kind of like sack up for it. But the triple ups are, yeah, they're big waves. Yeah. And How usually about? you go to the side of those. Yeah. So going right into them, yeah, you like, don't do you that don't in boats. Do that. How about agility and overall maneuverability for a 26 honestly, foot boat? Honestly, I'm pretty impressed. I feel like if you had a little bit bigger of a rudder, you probably could turn even more. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually surprised that it turns as well as it does yeah. with as small of a rudder as it has on there. This is a huge boat. Yeah. It's 26 feet. Like the only other 26 foot boat I could compare it to is like the X26. Right. And there's no way that boat turns like this. That's like driving a bus. Yeah. And when you hit the waves like that, then it also feels like um, it might explode. So 
It's kind of nice that it doesn't do that. Yeah, no <laughs> rattling, no crazy. That's my least favorite thing about boating is when you hit rough water and the dash starts falling off and things start like the fall the fiberglass. Fall out of there. Yeah, they're not falling out of there. <laughs> Your speakers will not fall out of that. Nope. Drivability, what rate it one out of ten? Dude, for smoothness, ten out of ten. Like no other wake boat will be able to do this for keeping it smooth like that. Anybody that wants to cruise through the channel, this is your boat. This is an area where you could actually kind of uh, knock on the boat. If you're if you're pure, you know, wakeboard people and you want like a perfect wakeboard wave every time it's gonna set up easily, the AL26 is not the boat for you. It'll do a good wakeboard wave. It takes some fine tuning to get it there and it's kind of sensitive to the weight because of how big the hull is. Um, you can get it there. We're not gonna do it right at this moment because I'm waiting for Brody from the factory to call me and tell me exactly what the wakeboard settings are. Instead, we'll start working on the surf settings. So we're gonna go ahead and fill the boat up. Um, uh, all the ballast full and then what's cool if you look here on the screen it has buttons that say surf left auto surf off surf right auto so you can actually hit the button and say yeah. say I want to surf right auto hit on the boat's automatically going to know which side to drain the ballast which side to open up the surf gate and it just kind of favors the wave towards that side same thing with the left side bam you can push it over there um, but even then, keep in mind that the surf wave is highly adjustable based off of the big trim tab in the back and also from the zip wake system. So it's like so many options that there's almost too many options, if that makes sense. Like there's so much going on that if you're not, a, if you're not somebody who actually learns the boat really well, it can be overwhelming and you can end up with a wave that's not ideal. This is the beautiful part of Pavati. Watch this. Here we go. Let's see the answers first, first try. So we're here obviously testing the boat right now. Right now we're getting ready to do a couple of different segments. We're going to set up the surf wave and then we're going to try to set up a wakeboard wave like you said and like we already know the, the 26 is not necessarily the, the flagship wakeboard machine but we're going to try to get a wave out of it. Sure. So I was telling here on the vlog, I was telling people that one of my favorite features about the boat is this, being able to call you and say hey set me up the boat's doing this the boat's doing that and since you know these things inside and out you guys provide you provide factory support for pretty much every customer right absolutely so yeah we, we've been growing that aspect of the business uh but i try and primarily take care of as many clients as we can and then it becomes more technical then what we would do is grab some of our technicians jason nick uh or running stephanie into it through our involved with custom service as well Okay, cool. Um, so right now I want to set up a good surf wave and we're all goofy. So tell me what I'm doing surf uh, surf wave buttons here. I have the bow full, should I empty the bow? You hear that, 12,000 pounds? That's By the time we got the boat and all the rider and everything? Pounds. Yeah, that's what we were trying to push with the wakeboard. That's a monster truck. It's <laughs> a monster truck, that's exactly. Ballast bags are full, ballast tanks are full, um, all the I'm settings are, are, are dialed. We're gonna let a little out. Go ahead uh, and give it a shot here. It's gonna be a little bit loud, so I'm gonna hang up. And then, uh, if we need a little bit more fine tuning, I'll call you back here. Okay? I That's love cool, that. Man. And he, Brody knows his stuff really, really well. He does his stuff all day, every day. So he has set us up for the perfect surf wave, allegedly. So who's up? I think, I think you are. I am. I go last. I'm like the okay, I'm like the grand finale, the encore. All right, so uh, old Colton there just got done with his first pass on the surfboard and see what he thinks of the wave. Okay, I'll be honest. It's a totally different surf wave. It's honestly beyond unique. And what, what the cool thing about it is, is if I was like a skimmer, it would be super, super sick. Cause it's something that like is really, really playful. And because I'm not, I'm like an average wake surfer. It literally feels like I am just going to get swallowed in how big that thing is. So it's pretty freaking big. It's like a nine out of 10 in, in size and only because we don't have 27 people in here, then I would say it's a 10. 
that's a that's a hell of a hell of a rating there. Nine out of ten. Um, you've ridden pretty much every wave out there, Nautiques, Malibus. Yeah, dude, it's just different though. It's it's almost not comparable, right? Just because it's totally a different surf wake. Like you could kind of say it's similar to like a Nautique in a way because it has that steep pitch to it. So you can jump way easier on a wake like this if people are looking to like learn how to ollie and that kind of stuff on a surfboard. This is so much better even than a Nauti. Like this is so unique. It's, I mean, it's like you're surfing behind the Loch Ness monster. You heard him right there. The Loch Ness monster wave. That's <laughs> that's saying something. That's a big old wave. So the foil board was interesting behind this boat because, I mean, you don't have to have like a perfectly shaped wake for the foil board. It just matters about how big the swell is. And so behind this boat, it's literally so much bigger than any boat I've ever been on behind and it goes for so long and so you can get way far back on that first wave to where you could even jump back to the second wave or the third wave because it's so big and so for foiling i, I would give this a 10 out of 10 just because of this like the size of the wave and so i mean i'm like way into foiling right now yeah. been three times but um <laughs> for foiling i'd give it a 10 out of 10. you rode the wave forever you rode that wave forever it and so it held easy. you there I kind of so easy to just get that far back, pump a little bit to come up forward. There was just so much energy in there. So you got a 10 better. Ethan, what about Colton? How do you feel about the spoil wave? I mean, I give myself a three out of 10 while spoiling back there, That's but ridiculous. the wave itself, had I been able to do it like Ethan, I mean, dude, it made Ethan a better surfer, so it's pretty dope. I don't, I don't even know how to rate it because it's just forever back there. I just agree with everything Ethan said, man. It's just you want something that's going to give you a push. It doesn't really matter what the wave looks like. So there really isn't another boat that does anything like that, like maybe a yacht. Other than that, then it's probably a Pavati. I want to show you guys one more thing that's a huge no-no um, for, for most boats, but it's a huge no big deal for the Pavati. We're going to ram it into the beach. Come look. I just throttled into this rocky beach. And uh, guess who doesn't care at all? And it's got that keel guard, the extra thick aluminum there. So that's why these boats are awesome. Because if you're on the river or somewhere, see you guys, have a good one. I just pulled right off the beach. No big deal. I love that because I hate dealing with anchors. I hate dealing with you know, trying to trying to set up and make sure that you got the perfect spot and worried about your boat. Pavati just says, nah, just pull it up on the beach. And they'll tell the from the factory, they'll tell you just do that. Like it's so rad and uh, it comes in handy when you're in gnarly areas, especially low water years like this where there's a lot of rocks and a lot of beach. Pull it right up, no big deal. Literally. How unnatural does that feel, right? Like, Dude, it hurts me. A bit. It really does. Like I'm over here, like you don't do that. <laughs> don't you dare ever do that. Uh, there will be a second video coming where we put it head to head against like a Nautique and maybe a Supra. Um, one thing about this boat is it attracts a lot of people. Like this boat probably coming to chat with us. Is Wait, is that Mario? Huh? Is that Mario? Yeah. Who What's up, dude? It's Dave. Oh, Dave. What's up, man? Hey, buddy. How are you? Long time no see. Yeah, dude. Wow. You want to try hydrofoil? Okay. Get on, let's go. Right <laughs> Mario is a, another helicopter pilot buddy of mine. Um, he's like the OG helicopter pilot in Utah. Everybody knows Mario. <laughs> Mario's trained everybody. He's the OG. Mario's the guy, so. Yeah.
adds a whole different element to the whole deal, yeah. right? So anyway. Do you like the wave big? Yeah, well, I guess you can, yeah. I mean, it was a little much for me. I'm just not <laughs> used to it, you know? What would you buy with 400 grand? Uh, my second house. Second home? Without a pool. Oh, leave the pool out of this, man. <laughs> Every time we talk I about this guy's house, he brings up the pool. Do you have a pool, Dave? I know, you know what? I don't have a pool. You don't have a pool. Not, so... no, I don't have a pool. Yep. Thanks. You might have a body, but I got a pool. <laughs> Colton, what would you buy with 400 grand? Man, uh, two of my first houses. So that's what I would buy. A couple of rental properties. I would have a couple rental properties for sure. Ash, what would you buy with 400 grand? Uh, Do you know what 400 grand buys? Yes. I would buy. <laughs> Clothes for the kids. Clothes for the kids. I would have the cutest clothes. <laughs> so four hundred thousand dollars worth of clothes. All right, that's a terrible investment. <laughs> Ethan, what would you buy four hundred grand? My first down payment on my helicopter. Ooh, I like it. Because you're gonna oh. sell me your BO one hundred five. You could buy my BO one hundred five for about that. <laughs> you could actually buy a helicopter. No, you know what? That's true. I bought my BO one hundred five helicopter for like three hundred twenty five grand. So seventy five grand less than this boat costs. I know. Oh, sir. Personal chef. A personal chef. I don't think you can buy people. Yeah. For, for 400, <laughs> yeah, that's a high taste freaking chef. How, how many years does that get us? Yeah. This is why I do You're the shopping in the family. Uh, real, real quick, just a disclaimer, we don't buy people. Uh, so we'd buy a helicopter, we'd buy a couple houses, we'd buy people. Um, I would buy a Pavati boat because I think it's worth it. I personally, my experience on this boat over the last two years has been nothing but positive some of those like certain parts of the hole are like an inch thick aluminum so if i hit a log or something i'm not worried about it breaking my my boat in half fiberglass boat yeah i'm worried so peace of mind uh unique uh just overall uniqueness um the cool factor for me i mean not everybody has 400 grand to spend on a boat i mean that's a lot of freaking money um, but if you want the ultimate cool factor, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my opinion right now. It's worth every penny. So I taught lessons for, wakeboard lessons for years. So I've literally been on the best of the best to literally the crappiest boats that you could be on. If there's ever been hype about a boat, it's been the Pavati boat. Like everybody wants to try it, everybody wants to ride it. It's like the go-to, you gotta try it out boat. And uh, so I was super psyched to try it out. And honestly, um, they are the coolest looking boat. So I just wanted to get inside of it and feel it. Part of me is always wondering, like when you go into a boat, I'm frustrated by prices of all the boats. I'm frustrated by it. So seeing what the price of the Pavati, I'm like, okay, hey, this thing's gotta be the sickest thing ever because it really is. I mean, it's the, it's the most expensive boat for what you, what you get out of it. So I wanted to see it. And honestly, I expected to have the biggest baddest wake and that it would hold the most weight that you could possibly put in a boat and I'm pretty sure it literally holds the most weight you can put inside of a boat so so we didn't get to test the wakeboarding yet I'm excited to test the wakeboarding um, for the surfing side of it and all the benefits that it has I honestly like just how friendly it is inside of the boat how friendly it is to sit in there and have people in there you could have tons of people in there and it wouldn't feel it wouldn't feel bad it's, it's honestly super cool to be honest I had pretty high expectations for the Pavati hearing so much about the aluminum hole and how big it is and how cool it is and then seeing the price tag like you have high expectations for a boat like that and I would say for the most part it came in on like higher than than most of my expectations the some of the best features were just like the smaller little details of of the boat and like I really loved how much thought went into every corner of that boat. And then just the overall look of it. I've only seen like one or two in person, but being on one and like seeing it up close, it, it really is a, a work of art rather than like just a, a manufactured boat. And then as soon as you touch it, it's like a rock solid boat. And then all of the lights and little features, those are the things that really st stuck out to me, especially with being on the boat and having that experience. You don't, you don't see that or you don't get that when you see it in pictures. And so it was, it was really cool. Guys, my first time ever in a Pavati was a unique experience because you hear all this like hype and build up and people are so excited about them um, that I was really concerned that maybe I was going to get there and it wouldn't live up to the expectations or the hype. Now you got to remember this is about two years ago when I had my first ride on it. I flew up to Oregon, uh, met with uh, Brody uh, and Chuck, the, the main dudes, Chuck's the owner of Pavati, him and his family, um, took us out on the lake, 
And as soon as we put the boat in the water, I was like, oh, there's something different about this. Like this is, it's more stable, it's more confident, all the interior is more plush, it's got more accessories, more features. Um, and then we obviously spent the day on the lake with them and, and I was sold. Like I was like, this is it, this is the boat I gotta have. So the reason why I haven't got my own Pavati boat yet. I mean, Pavati's put me in a new boat every year uh, with my partnership with them and, and we've used loaner boats and demo boats. And in fact, this boat belongs to my good buddy, uh, Jeff Mahaffey. So he's out of uh, Arizona and it's too hot down there to go boating. So he's like, hey, take my boat and use it and, and, and enjoy it. So big shout out to Jeff for letting us use the boat. Um, but the reason why I haven't sealed the deal on my exact boat with Pavati yet, which I'm actually working on, uh, is because we're gonna do some things different on my boat, including, Number one, obviously it's gotta be diesel powered. So we're working on a diesel engine that is gonna be a good fit for that boat. Diesel marine engines, high performance diesel marine engines are actually kind of tricky um, in that size. You can get bigger ones, but we can't fit much of a bigger engine than like a Duramax or something in there. So uh, my boat will have a diesel. And then also there's rumors and I can't say too much about it, but I am pushing Pavati to build me a little bit bigger boat. I'm hoping to be closer to like the 30 foot mark. So basically take this 26 footer and stretch it a little bit. Uh, I just think that'd be super cool. Um, I love the room. I love the big yacht feel. Uh, so, you know, that's what I'm doing to my personal boat. But if I was just go to go out and buy a 26 footer right now, I think I would change the way the bow drops. I don't love how much the bow drops. It looks great aesthetically, but on the water, it tends to, to splash a little bit more. So I'd maybe bring the bow up just a little bit more. Um, and then I would fix some of the other like glitches between the different systems, which I think Pavati is already fixed in the new models. Um, like the way that the speed control talks to the Garmin screen and some of those other little things where you have to operate different systems. I like having everything like seamless on one big screen like the Garmin. Um, but like I said, Pavati's pretty much got that figured out on all their new models. They're tying the systems together much, much more efficiently. I love any opportunity I get to get people in this boat because I mean, with only a hundred of these boats in existence, not very many people get to experience Pavati. So being that unicorn feel. Everybody wants to see it. They want to ride in it. They just want to see it in person even, uh, let alone go for a ride. So taking my buddies up, I'm super pumped on. And I also, these guys are legit. Like uh, Colton and Ethan, they know their really well. Really, really good athletes, really good water sports athletes. So seeing what they think about it is gonna be huge for me because obviously I'm, I'm a big fan and I want to see what they think. Also, we didn't get a chance to wakeboard uh, today because we're saving that for a second video where we're basically gonna take the Pavati and put it head to head against probably like a Malibu, a Nautique, maybe a Mastercraft, uh, maybe a Supra, some of these other high-end boats that are in this uh, wakeboarding, wake surfing space. And we'll go head to head, we'll battle them out. See who makes the bigger wave, see which boat is the preferred choice at the end of the video. Maybe it'll be a Nautique, maybe it'll be a Malibu. I doubt it. I think it's probably gonna be the Pavati just because of the overall cool factor, but it's hard for me to say it's unbiased because I already love the boat, which is why I'm trying to bring in all these different people to like give you their opinion and their feedback on it. Because I really want whoever's watching this to be like, oh, okay, like now I get it. Or no, that's stupid. Like if you take a, if you leave this video and you're like, that's not worth 400 grand, dude, that's fantastic. At least now you know what the features and capabilities are. If you walk away from this video saying, oh yeah, now I get it. Well then mission accomplished for me. So guys, ultimately I'm not here to necessarily sell you the boat because I'm already sold on it. I'm here to kind of peel back the layers of this mystery that is Pavati and these rare unicorn boats. Mario, 
Hey, just wanted to thank you again for an epic day. Yeah, boy, thank you so much. It was nice meeting your friends and your wife. So, anyhow, maybe we'll run into each other again out here. You take care. Bye-bye.